Good day, everybody. My name is Sergio Ferreira. Today I'll be performing an experiment for you with my partners, Picasa and Juan. Uh, this is actually a two part experiment. The first part would have been done before this one. Uh, it was called the recycling of aluminum cans, where we took aluminum cans, cut them down into smaller pieces, uh, took off the interior cellulose coating, the exterior paint coating, and then dissolved them in a solution of potassium hydroxide for a certain amount of time until it became completely dissolved. Uh, from there, we sent our solution through a uh, vacuum filtration system where we reclaimed just the pure liquid uh, solution of our alum. Then we added in uh, so, uh, concentrated sulfuric acid. Uh, from there, we reclaimed the actual crystals by running them through another vacuum filtration system and uh, had pure crystal. So the second part of the experiment that we're going to be performing for you today is called the solutions, solutions and Crystals of Alum. The objective of this experiment is to prepare solutions of alum to investigate the saturation of solutions and observe the recrystallization process. So I think first we should start by talking about what is a solution, a mixture of two or more either solids or liquids. Um, so a good example of a solution would be going back to your experiment one, where you dissolve sugar in water. In this case, the sugar would be considered our solute, our minor portion, and our water would be considered our solvent, our major portion. So the amount of solute that you can dissolve into your solvent is dependent on the temperature, the volume, and pressure. So by varying our temperature, volume, and pressure, we can come up with different saturation levels or concentrations in our solute. Today, we will be holding our volume constant, our pressure constant, and we'll be varying our temperature. So supersaturated solutions are solutions in which we vary one of these variables here to create, uh, to dissolve more solute into our solvents. Uh, in our case, we'll be holding the volume and pressure constant. We will be varying our temperature in order to dissolve more of our solute. So supersaturated solutions are an important concept for recrystallization. A solid contains a matrix of pure substances that we are interested in and impurities that we don't really care about. So what we're trying to do is we'll be varying the temperature of our solution, adding in more of our sol of solute into our solvent, then slowly dropping the temperature of our solution in order to leave our impurities in the solution while gathering or recrystallizing our species of interest. So now we'll be moving on to the experiment that we are going to be performing for you today. We start our experiment by recording the temperature in the lab, which is 21 degrees Celsius. We then recorded the mass of our beaker, which was 97.47 grams. We were asked to place between 14.8 and 15.2 grams of sodium thiosulfate. We took the recording of our beaker plus sodium thiosulfate on the balance to be 112.53 grams. Subtracting the mass of the beaker, we came out with 15.06 grams of the sodium thiosulfate, which is well within the range of 14.8 to 15.2. So then we are to transfer approximately two grams of crystal sodium thiosulfate from the beaker into a test tube, as demonstrated here. We'll obtain three milliliters of distilled water in a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder and transfer the water into the test tube containing the sodium thiosulfate. Next, we will mix the contents of the test tube by holding the test tube near the top and flicking the bottom with our finger in order to create a swirling motion. This will dissolve all of our sodium thiosulfate into our solution. We will keep adding small amounts of the sodium thiosulfate crystal into our solution until only a few crystals remain at the bottom. 
which would be the end of our saturation point. So as previously mentioned, we added small aliquots of the sodium thal sulfate into our solution until only a small amount of crystal remains at the bottom of our test tube. So we then measured the remaining sodium thal sulfate plus the beaker and came out with a weight of 110.36 grams, which means that 12.89 grams of sodium thal sulfate was not dissolved into our test tube. Therefore, 2.17 grams of sodium thal sulfate was dissolved into our test tube. So then we took a 250 milliliter beaker, filled it halfway, three quarters of the way with water, we placed the beaker on a ring stand uh, with the Bunsen burner. We placed our test tube with the solution of sodium thal sulfate into the beaker of water and heated, making sure not to boil. Then we added small portions of our sodium thal sulfate from our beaker into our test tube. So upon heating our solution, we were able to add the full 15 grams of our sodium thal sulfate into our 3 mils of water. The next step we'll be doing is filling a 250 milliliter beaker uh, with room temperature water, placing our sodium thal sulfate solution from our test tube into our room temperature water and allowing it to cool to start the crystallization process. So at this point, our supersaturated solution of sodium thal sulfate is cooling in our room temperature water bath for 15 minutes undisturbed. So after 10 minutes of our sodium thal sulfate solution sitting in our room temperature bath, we are able to see the formation of sodium thal sulfate crystals in our solution. So now we will be creating a supersaturated solution of our alum. We take a clean 250 milliliter beaker We'll add approximately 10 grams of alum into the beaker and solvate it with 70 milliliters of water. We will then heat our mixture in order to dissolve out our extra uh, solids. So after heating our solution, uh, dissolving our alum, we will come out with a clear solution as shown below. We will then tie a piece of thread to a glass rod, adjust the length so that way it just barely touches the top of our solution. We will place mineral oil through the top part of our string in order to prevent our solution from creeping up our string. We will then cover the beaker using a paper towel and rubber band in order to keep out any unwanted particulates. We will then store our solution of alum in a safe place, undisturbed for one week, where crystals will form. So after one week undisturbed, we will remove our beaker from our safe storage place and we will have produced a crystal that looks like this.